How's it going YouTube, it's Cornwall here. Thank you for joining me for another video today. And today we've got a quick look at F1 2019. Uh, game's coming out very, very soon. And it's a little bit earlier than what we would normally expect from an F1 game. Normally they come out towards the end of the season. So around September time, but it's actually coming out and we have a release date. So we'll start off with that one straight away, uh, the 28th of June. So we've got just over a month or just around a month from the, uh, the time this episode is released. Um, and yeah, it's looking fantastic. Now, to be fair, normally with these games, there's not an awful lot to get excited about, but they're actually implementing quite a few different things this year. So um, let's get let's get straight into it and get into the nitty gritty as I like to do on these videos. So um, right from the top, obviously, we've got the release date, 28th of June, just say that again. So that's out in uh, about four weeks time. You can get it a little bit earlier with the different editions that are coming out. So we'll, we'll cover that shortly in a minute as well. Um, the platforms are the Xbox One, PS4 and PC. So just the usual trio that we get them on. Um, you'll also be able to access Senna's 1990 McLaren MP4-5B and Alan Pross Ferrari F1-90 or Dash 90 uh, with eight different race challenges plus extra multiplayer liveries and different things on there as well. So they're making like a bit of a, a thing out of these rivalries, which is quite nice. Uh, Senna and uh, Pross are the first one that they're, they're doing um, and it, to me it seems like those things that they do in uh, the WWE games, the 2K games that they do over there where you get some of Stone Cold's uh, career and you get to do some of his matches and things like that. We've had The Rock and, and different things like that so it looks like they're embracing that but from the racing side so you actually get to go into the seat of one of those drivers. You might get to do both, I'm not 100% sure but you get to do that. Um, and they've also remapped or um, done some mapping on the likeness of the, the characters and from the images that I've seen, it looks really, really good. Uh, there's an anniversary edition coming out for this game, um, which because it is the 10th uh, anniversary that Codemasters has had the Formula 1 license for. So they um, it's got the 10th anniversary with it. So you get to drive the 2010 F10 of Alonso, uh, Fernando Alonso and um, Felipe Massa over at Ferrari and you also get to drive both uh, Lewis Hamilton's and Jensen Button's McLaren MP4-25 plus all the classic games from the previous game as well so they're all in there as well. There is a legendary edition which has got all the different bits in it and, and whatnot um, and that's where you get to play the game I think it's 10 days early. Um, something that's a bit of a, a fun fact for everyone that I wasn't aware of to an extent but it does make sense. Um, is that the the box art varies around the world. So if you are a, a bit of a collector, a bit of an F1 fanatic, then you've got a bit of a challenge on your hands. Um, but the uh, the game the game box changes from territory to territory. So in the UK um, and for the global release, we've got Hamilton and Vettel, who are the main features. If you go over to the Netherlands um, and Belgium and Luxembourg, you get Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. So obviously Max Verstappen's kind of obviously he is Dutch but um, obviously the Belgian guys and, and I guess Luxembourg look up to him as well he, they must have done some analytics on this um, and Charles Leclerc and Pierre Gasly feature on the French version of this so Charles uh, is obviously um, uh, from uh, Monaco uh, however they Mo Monacan or something like that they call them uh, and Charles Leclerc is, is French uh, sorry Pierre Gasly uh, is French Carla Sainz um, it goes alongside Hamilton in Spain. Uh, Robert Kubitz is alongside Hamilton for the Polish release. And then Lance, Lance Stroll again alongside Lewis Hamilton uh, in the Canadian release. So you've got someone from a lot of the different areas um, or, or diff people that race around the world. They're, they're like the top drivers in that league, mainly along with Lewis Hamilton, apart from a couple of exceptions where uh, you've, Lewis Hamilton's not on it at all. Um, so just that was just something interesting that I found out uh, looking at the, the press release for it and it's just something I didn't really appreciate but it does make sense and I guess they do it with the FIFA games and, and, and whatnot but um, there, there you go. Um, the F1, uh, sorry the F1, the new features for the, for the F1 2019 game, um, the biggest one is the fact that there's the F2 championship so the first time this is going to feature in a game I think or officially in a game uh, and obviously the FIA have, have endorsed this. Um, there is a slight negative, but it's not going on forever, so it's not a problem. However, when it first comes into the game, it's the 2018 lineup. So the weird thing is, is you'll be able to race um, people like um, Lando Norris, George Russell, people like that that were in F2. 
uh, in F2 and then you'll be able to go into the F1 side of things and you'll be able to race them again. So a bit strange, but they, they have said that they will be updating uh, that lineup later on in the year. So just makes me wonder if they've just not quite managed to get all that into the system before or into the game before releasing it. Um, there's a massive thing on uh, rivalry this time and it's a big theme throughout um, and in the, 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 the single player or career version of it, um, obviously because you've got the Senna and Pross rivalry anyway, but part of the career is you will get rivalries up and down the, the pit lane and different conversations that you have and you know, you'll end up generating a rival and friend and, and different things like that. Um, I, I just realised that I bounced off the F2 stuff quite quickly. That is really, really interesting. I'm really looking forward to that because um, it is a, a stock race, if you, if you like. Um, obviously, I'm not sure how much the guys get to do on the car, if it's the whole car or just the engine but it is, everything's the same and it's just about the drivers and, and the racing and for anybody that's really into the F1 games but maybe struggles with them a little bit, um, with the F2 game you'll at least be able to get into it and you will be able to try the F2 cars which are a little less, um, a little less underpowered if you like compared to the, the F1 cars because obviously it is a step up to get into the F1 cars so at least you can just kind of pace yourself a little bit and go into the F2 and do that championship and things like that as well. The other big thing for this year is the fact that there's a customizable car. So this has been developed uh, with assistance of Ross Braun and Pat Simmons. And the idea of this is it's a car that's being developed, if you like, with aero and, and things like that. So it's a unique car, but it's it's I think it's on par with the rest of the F1 cars, but it allows you to customize that car and put your own liveries on it. So it's the first time that Codemasters have put livery onto the into the F1 game. Now, um, I know Stuart Cullen that's been out and, and had a look at this a little bit, and it's not gonna be as in-depth as you get in Forza and, and other games. However, it's a good basis. It, they're not going all in, and then there's gonna be issues where you can't do things and you can't do certain shapes and whatnot. It's either there or it isn't, and then I presume they'll just add it with, with updates. And one thing that was good about F1 2018 is they did update it that you keep adding things if sponsors change, liveries change, different things like that. Um, and different things around the track as well. They did continue to update it and support the game as well. There's also a massive influence or push for esports as well. So it's even got its own little section. You'll be able to watch the esport races via the game. Um, and it looks like they're going a lot more onto the multiplayer side of things as well, which is really, really good. To be fair, there's, there's not an awful lot that they can change in this game compared to what was in 2018, other than you know the, the updates, changing Force India to Racing Point, changing the drivers around, changing the sponsors, things like that. Um, I don't think we've had any new tracks this year. That's more next year that we're getting. Um, by the sounds of it, we'll be going to the Netherlands. I can't pronounce the name of that track, but we're going there. Um, I think there's a Vietnam track and there's all sorts of different tracks that are, are coming and going. So it's going to be really, really interesting for, for, for 2020's car uh, game even. But um, at least with this one, they're, they're bringing it out a little bit earlier so you can race along if you like. So this will be from somewhere just after the Canadian Grand Prix. You'll be able to do that. And obviously I'm going to bring you all the wheel settings and things as well as always on this channel. And I'm actually going to try and do the career all the way through. Um, one thing that I'm a little bit guilty of is I'll race the game and sometimes I just forget to hit the record button because I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, and something that I'm really enjoying on the 2018 one, I'll try and get a few videos out soon, is I've had a few random errors. And I know this isn't about the 2019 game, but I'm just giving you a flavour of what's coming out if you're not sure about what, what whether you're going to get this game or not, or you've been put off by other games and you've heard a lot of people say how good 2018 is, but you never made the jump. Um, so two things that have happened to me recently. Uh, one thing was I was doing a practice runs so within, the, within the practice. There's like little, I call them mini games, but there's there's training. So you get a track familiarization. You have to go through a certain gates, a certain speed and get a certain lap time. And you end up getting points and then you can upgrade your car throughout the career mode. And there's different things like that. I was doing one where I had to look after my tyres, I think it was. So I was taking my time in the corners and then my aim was, or what I was personally doing um, around this, the track that I was on, which I think was boring at the time, was I was taking my time around the corners, still getting a, a decent average speed, and then on the straight side, leather it with the DRS open and gain that time back up and just get a really nice exit. So use a little bit of the tyre to come out that corner and then open the wing up and off we go. 
And then um, as I was doing my, my outlap and, and going around and things, my race engineer came over and said, hmm, we've got a problem with the DRS so you can't open it. I was like, oh, shit, great. Don't, no need to come into the pits. We can fix it while you're out and about. We'll reboot it or whatever it is they do. Um, so I carried on and I managed to just do it, but it was a bit tricky and then suddenly it came over, you know, carry on, keep going. We've still got an issue with it, but it's fine. Just carry on doing what you're doing. You're doing a good job. And then the next time um, I, I went to go around, they said, oh, we fixed it. Right, off you go. And phew, straight open because I was on the straight and off we go. Um, so that's really cool that, that things like that just randomly happen. And then in that same uh, Grand Prix, so this was in free practice, then in the qualifying, I went to go in there, right, Let's get to do some qualifying. Let's, let's see if we can chuck it on pole. And I had to sit in the garage for four minutes because my fuel was fucked. Um, and they were like, yeah, sorry about this. Um, you, you've just got to sit and wait and wait for us to, to fix it, basically. So I couldn't go out and do my time. I managed to go out and thankfully put it on pole. But um, it's really nice that they add those little features in. And I'm hoping there's going to be more of that to come in the 2019 game. So um, overall, guys, I'm really looking forward to this. I really like this game. I'd love to get a little league going on it. So if you are interested, let me know. Um, I'm going to play it a lot again, hopefully do some streaming with Matt. Um, it was quite interesting as doing our little things and trying to get the starts doing. Still can't do a start properly, but there we go. Um, but yeah, the game's coming out. There's a lot more cars coming. There's obviously all updated and the F2 stuff, and it just looks like it's going to be phenomenal. Um, so stay tuned for the uh, onto the channel, guys, because I'll be putting videos out as soon as ever I get my hands on the copy of the game. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so until next time, guys. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, chuck a comment below if you're excited about this game, what you're looking forward to, if there's anything I've missed. Um, and until next time, see you all on the next video.